since my first video on Pirate Warriors 4, I've been through the whole dramatic log, aka the story mode, and more of the episodic logs with the additional battle scenarios. I wanted to make this video as a follow-up to the first one because now that I played through more of the game, I have a few more critical thoughts about the game. I don't consider this to be a review so much as my opinions on how the overall game turned out. In terms of the game aspects, it is fun. The Musa Warrior style games are one of my favorites to play and can be a stress relieving and relaxing game. Uh, there are 43 characters to play with and there are 9 incoming ones, the first of which has been announced as Smoothie Charlotte. The move sets of the characters are, at least for re returning ones, aren't quite the same, and the radial of the four unique moves is a different and fun addition that is not quite just here's one or two moves. With every Warriors game, not just these games, I do think some characters are more fun to play as than others, and even easier to play as than others. I definitely try to swap around to different ones depending on my mood. And even will get bored playing with the same character all the time. I mean, uh, that's why I think it's fun when the story mode offers more options. And it's not just, hey, play as Luffy throughout the entire thing. In talking about the characters, the leveling of the characters is my favorite that they have included. The coins gained from completing battles are used to upgrade the character stats like before. But now on a grid map of islands, like a sphere grid. The stats are health, stamina, attack, defense, and skill slots. And this is also where additional moves and skills can be unlocked. Octo equip. The starting map is a general map that is universal for all the characters. So when I realized this, I started focusing on this map for a majority of the upgrades I did, as it meant that any new character I unlocked would already have these increases unlocked. From there, each character has two specific maps. The first contains their additional moves and additional skills. The second I found for every character I've unlocked it with so far, it's just stat increases that are higher cost and both of coins and money, which is another factor to unlocking them of. It's not just having enough coins, but also having the money to go with it. The reason I consider this to be my favorite is because there isn't an additional experience level system attached to it. It is harder, I think, to fully upgrade the characters, and I also think it makes some levels harder as a result. It isn't anything I can push through with a low level character just because they'll level up and heal as I go through the level. Granted, I still haven't maxed out any characters, but it creates a little bit of a challenge for now as I'm trying to get them maxed out abilities. Next is the area maps and they range in size but I love that the territories are not stuck in a box and rather the entire map is split into quadrants. This uses more of the space of the map rather than players running from one box to the next which I did a lot of in the previous game. The map reminds me more of how it even looked in the series. Is like they I don't know how but it reminds me so much more of how it would look because probably a lot due to the fact that they're not forcing box territories into the overlay and just letting the open space be a quadrant in terms of territory I think the only map I disliked playing was the Anoslava just because being accurate to that one meant having areas of going up and down stairs, which is another factor to the maps now, is there were tiers. Now I want to move away from the game elements and I want to touch on the how the game covered the series. And I started to mention this a little bit with the maps, but the areas that were included in the series are done very well. I say were included because not everything gets adapted in this game. Even in my last video, I realized that they had jumped forward in the story to start the game aim at Alabasta after going through the tutorial. This means all of East Blue and Drum Island have already been cut. However, these were not the only cuts. Skypea, Thriller Bark, 
Impel Down, Fishman Island, and Punk Hazard were not included in Pirate Warriors 4. These certainly aren't the only ones not included, but these are the ones that were included in Pirate Warriors 3 and now have been cut from Pirate Warriors 4. This has become my biggest issue with this game and it's not that I can't accept the removal of arcs. I was somewhat disappointed but still fairly accepting that they cut East Blue and Drum Island. One Piece is a long series to make maps, characters, for every major point can be a strain on the resources for a game and considering they didn't lump each arc into just one fight like previous games did and, and split them up into multiple probably also oh, put a strain on resources but allowed them to be more accurate to the narrative. My issue more so comes with the picking and choosing of arcs. Had it not been a jump to a new starting point I wouldn't have felt oh, as disappointed with it. It feels somewhat disjointed and even somewhat insulting that they picked and used arcs because I was even excited to see how some arcs would be split up only to find out they had been cut. Making it seem like that arc just wasn't popular enough to even make the cut. This also becomes even somewhat more of a dig as one of the arcs that is included is game original Wano arc. The arc starts off somewhat similar to the series and then goes off in a direction that I compare to the Stampede movie where it's trying to cram a bunch of different characters in and basically make it a showcase of a bunch of different characters characters rather than being anything close to what the actual oral arc will end with. And while, while it, it is probably one of my favorite battles to play through that I did in the game, it doesn't lessen the blow that their made up version of an unfinished arc got priority over other arcs. And yes, I know why it was included. Wano is the current arc running in both the manga and anime series and they wanted to put Kaido on the cover. This isn't the first time this has happened. Pirate Warriors 3 had an awful and annoying final battle with their original game version of the Dress of Rosa arc. Really, I already sort of mentioned how I would prefer them to do this, this if they are going to just cut arcs out of the story and if they are going to follow the story, is pick a new starting point and cover all the arcs after that point. Really, I think the first Shibonde point would have been in the best intro to go to, as one of the other big selling points in marketing for this game was the inclusion of more of the worst generation characters. One of my struggles that I have found with viewing this game more critically is that it comes, overall it comes off average. It certainly has high points, and while they're small in number of downsides, they're a huge factor in my overall enjoyment. Really, my conclusion remains the same as it was after playing Pirate Warriors 3. I hope they go back to doing something more like Pirate Warriors 2 again. Pirate Warriors 3 covered the events of the series much like the first Pirate Warriors and what Pirate Warriors 4 is doing. But Pirate Warriors 2 did something different, introduced an original plot that played with that they played with to introduce characters and events from across the series. But from the start, it didn't need to be accurate to those plot lines since it wasn't trying to be. Overall, do I love this game? Yes, I will play it. I will play much more of it and I will probably continue to go back to it to play more of it as I go on because not only am I trying to get the Platinum, but the Platinum actually doesn't even have the need to unlock everything in the game. So I can still probably go back to it every now and again when I feel like playing in the style of game, aim to unlock even more that the Platinum didn't require. I've said many times before and I will continue to say that anime games are not the place to start a series. Any anime game that you're playing should be because you know and love the series to a degree. And I'm not saying you can't start from a game, but it is inadvisable. That's another reason why I 
don't care for these games to rehash the plot line. And it might just be because they don't have the budget. It is a disappointment when even when they're being more accurate than they have ever been to the story, they're wholeheartedly now having to ignore other parts. So I think I'd rather them do something new and not try to rehash the same territories again. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.